Hey, what's going on guys? Um, welcome back to the channel. I am currently using my new GoPro. Um, I'm gonna probably be making more videos here in my car just because I'll be commuting a lot more to the hospital. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am currently finishing up my third year, so I just have about a week left in third year, and then I'll be starting my fourth year here in July. Um, but I wanted to make a quick video just kind of talking about some you know, tips and tricks and just some advice about third year. So if you guys are going to start your third year of medical school, um, this should be a pretty good video for you guys. Um, the first thing I want to mention is attendings aren't going to expect you guys to know anything. So if you're worried about um, knowing medications, knowing different uh, differential diagnoses, different pathologies, stuff like that. Just don't worry because attendings don't really expect you guys to know any of that stuff. Third year is all about learning as much as you can um, about real clinical medicine, which is something that medical schools really struggle to prepare you with. Um, and that's something that I really want to talk about in a future video. But one of the things that I was super nervous about going into third year was pharmacology. I felt like I wasn't prepared in medical school to know different medications, their mechanisms of action, um, indications of use, um, and especially dosages. And you guys don't need to know dosages as a third year medical student. Obviously, the more you can know, the better. Um, but just don't feel like you need to know exact dosages. Now, I mentioned this in my most previous video on how I would recommend you guys set up your third year rotations, like the order in which you do them. Um, and I'll briefly mention it here. So I would recommend starting with family med, then doing pediatrics, OB-GYN, psych, um, surgery, and then internal medicine, and then your elective. So for me, that was emergency medicine. Um, it's going to be different for all of you guys. And if your school's setting up your third year rotations, then you really have no control over the order. But if you do have some sort of control, I'd recommend doing it in that order. I just feel like you start very broadly in family medicine and pediatrics. You get a good um, idea of common medications um, that you're going to use in all of the different specialties. And then it's just really going to give you a good foundation for the rest of your third year. Um, it's hard to start with something like surgery or internal medicine because you really aren't going to know anything and those, and those rotations require quite a bit of knowledge even as a third year medical student. But like I mentioned in my previous video, if you do end up starting with those rotations, don't be worried or nervous because your attendings, like I said, are not going to expect you guys to know anything as, you know, a new third year medical student. And even right now at the end of my third year, my attendings, they still don't expect me to know very much about really anything. Um, so that just goes to show, you know, how much confidence that they're actually going to have in you as a medical provider. Um, but like I said, this year is all about just learning and building that foundation to help propel you into fourth year and ultimately into your residency. So as a third year medical student, you're going to be doing your rotations. And at the end of each rotation, you're going to have an exam. It's called a shelf exam. It's a standardized exam. It's like 120 questions. Um, you get like two and a half hours to complete it. So it's very similar to kind of the stuff you saw on step one or complex one. And you're essentially going to study for those the same way you did for boards. So whether you used Sketchy or UWorld um, or just whatever other resource that you used for boards, I'd recommend just using the same resource for your shelf exams. Um, most of you will probably get the UWorld questions through your medical school and that essentially that's all I used to study for my shelf exams. I tried to do 15 to 20 questions a day and that may seem like a very minimal amount, but at least for me, I was exhausted after my shifts um, during my rotations. Um, and so you really don't have a ton of time to study for your shelves. 
nor do you really need a lot of time because the shelves are fairly straightforward. They're pretty simple. Um, and it doesn't take a lot to just pass your shelf exams. Um, now, if you're one of those go-getters and you want to honor your shelf exam, then you're definitely going to have to dedicate more studying. Um, and that will probably look different for everyone, but I'd probably recommend doing 30 to 40 questions a day. Um, otherwise, make up for the questions you don't do during the week on the weekends. Um, if you're a good test taker, then it might not even be that difficult to honor your shelf exams. For me, I'm not a great test taker. I studied very minimally for my shelves, so I just passed them and I felt perfectly fine passing my shelf exams. They don't do a whole lot for you if you honor them, unless you're trying to go into a very competitive specialty um, like surgery or dermatology. Um, stuff like that. So if you're going to go into those, then maybe focus more on honoring your shelf exams. There are a few books that I would recommend for third year. One is for surgery, and I totally forgot the name of it, but I'll put it down in the description. Um, it's super good, and I'd probably recommend just getting it as a new third year med student, whether you start with surgery or not, because if you didn't know surgery, there's a lot of medicine in surgery. So when you round on your patients in the morning, you have to treat them medically. Um, it's not just um, you know doing operations all day and then that's it. You have to take care of your patients even after surgery. Um, so you need to know a lot of medications. You're gonna have diabetics. So you're gonna need to know your diabetes meds. They're gonna be hypertensive. You're gonna need to know all of those antihypertensive medications. Um, you know, these people have chronic illnesses. They're not just here to get an operation. So even after surgery, you're going to have to manage their chronic um, conditions as well as acute changes that they have in, you know, their electrolyte status or um, if they develop a fever or an infection, you have to know antibiotics, all of those different types of things. Um, but this surgical book, I really wish I freaking knew the name of it right now but i'll definitely put it down in the description it has all of the information you need to do well on your surgical rotation but it's also going to help you in other rotations like i said it essentially goes by problem and so if somebody comes in with a possible appendicitis um, it's going to tell you which labs you need to get to diagnose it which imaging um, it's going to tell you complications it's going to tell you how to treat you know um, an infection, um, all of these different types of things. I think so. I think this book is really, really good. The other book I would recommend is for internal medicine. Again, I don't remember the name of this book, but I'll put it in the description. And actually, my preceptor let me borrow his own copy of this book for my rotation. And again, it's it goes by problem. So you're going to see so many different problems in internal medicine, as well as um, you know family med and pediatrics. And so I recommend getting this book because it's going to tell you which labs to get, how to treat things, how to image things. Um, it's going to tell you all the things that you didn't learn in medical school. Let's put it like that. So I'll put those books in the description um, below and I'll put the Amazon links as well. Use the Amazon links if you guys want. It'll help out the channel and it'll probably be one of the cheaper options. Um, if you're looking for the cheapest option, just look on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. Um, eBay is a really good place to get medical books for really cheap. So that's a little uh, tip for you guys. Now, a lot of you guys may be wondering if there's a lot of free time during um, your third year medical school. You may have heard that there isn't, but then you may have heard that it's the best year of medical school. Um, so my answer is yes, you have a lot of a free time during your third year um, and it definitely comes down to which uh, rotation you're on so if you're in surgery you're not gonna have any free time because you're gonna be in the hospital six days a week for up to 15 hour shifts um, so if you do the math that's close to like 90 hours a week yeah it's pretty ridiculous especially as a medical student um, but it is what it is um, so yeah, there's that. If you're on something like your elective or pediatrics um, or any really outpatient specialty, 
then you're going to have quite a bit of time. Usually you'll, you'll do um, a schedule like nine to five, Monday through Friday. You may have a half day or even a full day off during those rotations. Um, so definitely take advantage of that time. Um, that also makes studying for your shelves a lot easier. Generally, you'll do better on your shelves when you have um, that extra time to study. Oh, and I did fail to mention that, at least for me, the majority of information that showed up on my shelf exam, I learned that information during my rotation. I didn't actually study that information. I didn't learn it from a book or a set of practice questions. So I highly recommend paying attention to everything during your rotations because a lot of what you're going to see on your shelf exam, you're going to actually just learn that by seeing it in clinic or on wards during rounds. Attendings will, will quiz you on these things. And so that's the majority of where you're going to be doing your studying is by actually practicing medicine. So definitely pay attention during your rotations, take notes. Um, but don't be one of those people that's jotting down everything. Um, you don't want to annoy your attendings or your residents. And in all reality, um, you're going to learn this stuff so well that you really don't need to take notes on everything. Um, so just jot down stuff that you think is interesting or that you really want to remember. Um, so yeah, pay attention during your um, rotations. There's so many things that I know I'm missing about third year. So if you guys have specific questions, just drop them down in the comments and I'll answer them. Um, one thing that I do want you guys to know is at the end of each rotation, you should definitely write a thank you card to your attendings. Um, I also included a gift card. Um, but that's definitely up to you guys if you want to do that and you have like the financial ability to um, provide a gift card to your preceptor because for the most part your preceptors are volunteering they're not getting paid um, and so it's just a nice gesture and if the last thing they remember from you is that you wrote them a card and gave them a gift card then they're gonna hopefully forget a lot of the mistakes that you made and hopefully you'll end up getting an even better evaluation. So guys, this was just a short uh, and sweet video. Hopefully uh, you found something useful from it. If you guys have more questions, drop them in the comments. Like I said, I'll leave the links to those two books in the description. So you guys can go check those out. Um, but my last words would just be to enjoy third year, really try to absorb all of the information that you can. Um, and just don't be stressed because medical school does a poor job at preparing you for third year and it's not your fault. So um, good luck to everyone. Um, I'm here to answer any questions and stay tuned for another video.